Alaska's glaciers are melting at a staggering rate. Our numbers predict somewhere around 75 gigatons per year of water that's being sent into the ocean. Anthony Arndt of the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington co-authored a study by the University of Alaska Fairbanks, published in Geophysical Research Letters. This is new water. This is water that's coming out of storage from the glaciers that's contributing to global sea level change. How much change in sea level worldwide? So if we spread that water out over all of the oceans, it's somewhere around two-tenths of a millimeter per year. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually quite significant in the global sea level budget. Right now, uh, the global predictions are somewhere around three millimeters per year of sea level rise. And that comes from mass losses from glaciers and ice sheets, and then also from the fact that ocean waters, when they warm up, they expand and they cause sea level to rise. Using satellite data, the study mapped some 27,000 glaciers in Alaska. Over 20 years, researchers painstakingly surveyed more than 100 glaciers by air using a laser altimeter. So we have this device in the back of the aircraft that tells us the distance between the airplane and the ground surface. So it's reflecting a laser beam off the surface of the ice and we measure the travel time. That tells us the distance between the aircraft and the surface. And then we have a precise GPS measurement that tells us the precise location of the aircraft over time. So we fly along the center line of these glaciers, get a precise mapping of its elevation, come back maybe three or five years later, fly along that same path again, and we get a change in the surface elevation over that time period. We then extrapolate that to the whole glacier, and we get a total volume change that occurred over those five years or so. And then we have to take that measurement for that glacier, extend it over the entire state, over all the 27,000 glaciers. So we monitored somewhere around 120 glaciers with this technique. Oh my God. The dramatic calving of ice in tidewater glaciers makes for spectacular imagery. But most of the melt-off comes from glaciers that terminate on land. Why is that? We don't really have a good answer to that yet. Um, it has to do with the um, configuration of these tidewater glaciers. Back about 100 years ago, these tidewater systems were far extended. Um, some of the early explorers came into Glacier Bay and saw that the, the, the end of the bay was just filled with ice. And that's because this was a cold period in Earth's climate. And then over the last 100 or so years, these tidewater systems retreated back very, very rapidly. And so we're kind of at the end of that um, response to the end of what's called the Little Ice Age. And these glaciers are now far back in a sort of retracted position. And normally they would start to advance again and push ice back out into the ocean. And for some reason, that process doesn't seem to be reinitiating. It could be because there's less precipitation, uh, there's less chance for these glaciers to gain back mass and build up again. Despite the high rate of mass loss, Alaska, America's only Arctic state is far from running out of ice. Alaska has um, a high concentration of ice, especially at high elevations. And so the ice in Alaska is not going to disappear anytime soon because there's still quite a bit of ice in these high mountain areas. Alaska has some of the highest mountains in North America and that can collect a lot of snowfall and that allows for a continuation of the formation of this ice. This is certainly an indicator of some of the major impacts of global climate change. Uh, glaciers are one of the best signals for how changes in the Earth's climate may be affecting the entire globe. And, and they respond directly to changes in, in air temperature and precipitation. So they're one of our best indicators of what's happening as global climate is changing. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.